um, frozen desserts for South America is an example of a project that was created earlier, obviously. And actually, if you look on the bottom here, you see some of this information was carried over from the project request. Um, <clears throat> that can be controlled. So up here, we've got a chart in, in, in old money or in, in bright work, we would have called this uh, project statement. So we went with the name charter here, but you can change that, of course. So you get your project manager and sponsor, in this case, came over from the request, your portfolio and your program, when it was created, and you've got to link back to the original request, which I won't click now. So if you're wondering where did this project came from, who, who, who approved this, you can see that there and the requester. The team, a project manager and sponsor, and, and um, <clears throat> they're automatically filled in. And then the team members are automatically added as you give people work with the start and finish date of when they're rolling on and off based on the tasks. So we'll, we'll maybe add somebody else there that we don't see and that'll come up in a minute. Here we've got the stages of the project. Now, in this case, the stages can be a little bit more if you wish. So for example, if I click business case, it's my stage, and I see there's the stage and there's the information. I say, well, actually that one is well started. So I kind of update that. And if I look, this stage has two deliverables. So if I click on the deliverable, and I see down here in the bottom, it has a document or a file template already loaded as part of the project creation. So you can create projects, not only with the structure, but you can create them with a set of stages, tasks, deliverables, documents, sample issue, issues, sample risks, preloaded, preloaded, so that it gives people a good start and so that it encapsulates the process uh, that you want people to think about. So there's your stages, current start, current finish, and so on. Now, if I go back, uh, go to the next one, which is our, our, our project. Um, if I click here, I see this is the project. See the orange? There's the baseline. So there are the original project dates we set up. I unclick that. And if I drag this task, actually, this task is going to just take that a little bit longer. And now I look at my baseline. And the baseline, of course, is out because the orange represents what I originally thought the project would be. And now I'm looking at what the project actually is. Um, I, I can also go into this particular task here. I can look at a resource. Um, I don't think we had Fintan on that list. I do save. And, and if we go back here to the team, uh, Fintan is now added. I can't remember, was he on it? Um, let's assume he wasn't. He, he might have been, I can't remember. But if he wasn't, he would have been added here to the team roster automatically. Um, so there's our um, there's our, our project plan, and then our project plan could have one task or many. It could have um, if we look here, each item is a task. You can say that some items are deliverables and stages, and they report up differently for you. You can assign resources, as we say, one or more resources. You can have dependencies. And the dependencies can be uh, the four types. Um, let's look here. And you see finish to start. But if we add a new dependency, it can be any one of the four types you know, um, that you would probably expect. We kind of can indent, outdent. We can collapse. We can, if I click on this task here, I can add a task above, below, a child, or a milestone, and so on. So I've got pretty good control over what's happening in my project. I go to my work, I see the work that's assigned to me on this project. 